Hi and welcome. My name is Don Dahlmann and this is Nicole Scott. Um, maybe you have seen all our episodes about hydrogen and the hydrogen revolution and you learned about the business opportunities and uh, all the other things. Uh, today we want to show you and we want to talk about uh, the impact of hydrogen in our whole society. So when we want to look at hydrogen in a holistic way, I think we have to kind of take a step back and take a look at exactly how we've been evolving with our energy needs. There was industry revolution. So the first industry revolution was, you know, you have to have three things to make an industry revolution. One is the communication, energy, and then the mobility. So in the first uh, uh, industry revolution, there was printing and newspapers, yeah? And uh, most, uh, da, 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 yeah, you know, most energy was coal and the mobility was a steam engine, yeah? And the second in, uh, industry revolution with, was with uh, telephone, radio, yeah? And t television and the energy was oil and the, the transportation media was the vehicles with internal combustion engine. Now we are ready for third industry revolution because we have renewable energy, solar, wind, and we have 5G internet, IoT, new communication system, and now we have powertrain like fuel cell and battery. Yeah? So everything can change and we are in the situation of beginning of third revolution and everything will change. This industry revolution comes once in 100 years and we have to be prepared of that I think. I think this is why it takes a lot of time for people to really understand the shift yeah. and that when I speak to people online about hydrogen and what's happening in the future, why they're so stuck on comparing it to electric vehicles or like why there's like such a basic moment of just how what's the efficiency of this to consume like to consume energy right they're not seeing that we're working towards creating a renewable energy right and then creating this new ecosystem of how to use that renewable energy mm. and to see how long we've had to optimize our current co2 heavy production phase nothing can compete with that I mean, we've had wars and we've had decades to fine tune this system of how to know. You know, make, make energy from oil. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. I mean, if you, if you compare it like to, to the price of water, for example. So mm -hmm. if you, if you strip off the tax of a liter of gasoline here in Germany, I think for a liter is around 130 at the moment, 130 euros. So if you strip away the tax, which is 70 to 80 percent, you're left with like 20 or 30 cent or maybe 40 cent per liter that you pay for for one liter of gasoline that was transported from wherever in the world around the world was put into huge factory and facility and then transported again to you to your local gas station and if you go to a supermarket and buy a liter of water you pay more so it's and this is maybe coming from around the corner uh, if you're not living in the US and buying Fiji water, but it's like coming around <laughs> from around the corner. So it, it, it's, it's unbelievable how efficient the system is. And therefore, it's also unbelievable or it's, it's hard for us to believe that there is something new coming up and that something is changing. I mean, people couldn't believe that um, there would be television one day or there would be radio one day or something like this. And so people cannot understand or maybe not understand that there may be hydrogen in the future replacing a lot of energy sources that we use now. You know, over the past few months, we've talked to a lot of people about hydrogen and we've learned so much. And one of the more um, like logistically practical people that we've spoken to that I yeah. really enjoyed the way that he thought was uh, Home Power Solutions, right? Yes. And how what they're doing is they're putting an electrolyzer in the home so yeah. that you can create hydrogen in your home and then you could potentially feed it back to the grid, you could yeah. put it into your car, and um, an actor who makes the electrolyzer, they're looking to bring that price down within, what is it, three years? To two and a half thousand? Next three years to two thousand, two and a half thousand. Yeah, years, to two yeah. and a half thousand. So you can be creating, I mean, Home Power Solutions has to create the, you know, 
mechanics around the electrolyzer yeah. for you to do that in the home. Yeah. But this sort of idea, it's too expensive now, but the potential of the way that he sees the world, you know, holistically changed through having your own power production of hydrogen in the house is really inspiring. The, it's, it's a modular device, so it will fit into 19-inch racks, um, like a, like computer systems. Um, this is the size of the system. It is uh, seven unit high, so it's modular. It's uh, it can be um, taken by one person in an, in a rack or not. So it's quite it's it's handy um, for an electrolyzer. And our idea is scalability. So um, if you need more hydrogen to produce, you simply put more and add more more electrolyzer, very much like uh, you, you build up your um, IT systems. So if you can take a house off the grid and remove it from all energy sources so it's completely independent, how would this work for, say, a country who's in the process of developing their own energy infrastructures? I mean, we obviously want to make them green. We yeah. don't want to put, you know, old carbon heavy methods of producing energy onto, you know, places like Africa who yeah. are looking at green alternative solutions. Exactly. So if I think you, you, the picture you painted is perfect. I mean, if you can take a house off the grid, uh, what about a country? What about a country? Yeah. So can you put a country off the grid? Yes, you can. What, what, what are you going to do with countries who are not on the grid or like connected to the grid with the areas? So, And I think um, we see that um, with a company called Boreal Light. It's a startup from Berlin. And they are producing, for example, uh, water uh, using uh, also hydrogen. And they're producing these kind of generators where you can cook with in, in, in certain areas. And I think that's, and, and it's cheap, um, and it's wor it, it works. I think what's most interesting about Boreal Light is that they got the idea to create these systems to purify water. Yeah. And then when they were out there installing these systems yeah. uh, water water purification, and it's so much more affordable than buying water yeah. in, in the stores. I mean, it's like four to, four to eight dollars a yeah. liter. You know, but then they're down to 20 cents, right? Yeah. So like they're providing like a solid, economically viable way to create clean water. And right now when you need to create hydrogen, you need clean water, right? You need water that's purified, yeah. right? And so they, they got this idea of watching everyone drag wood in from, you know, 40 kilometers away. And they thought we can create a centralized kitchen. We produce solar water desalination and water filtration system for counties in Africa and uh, South America and let's say counties without access to water and electricity. Uh, what we are doing, we, we are taking any kind of water, uh, polluted water, salt water, sweet water, we desalinated it, we clean it with UV, with sand filter, with carbon filter, so at least you have drinkable height, uh, hygiene water um, for drinking. We have this water kiosk, then we uh, deliver this uh, desalination system, modular with this uh, hydrogen issue, and the people uh, have some in the village's uh, village kitchen, one kitchen for the village, and then they can bring uh, their stuff and then can cook there. Alternative, we are also working in, uh, for a solution that they, the hydrogen, the produced hydrogen is compressed in a cylinder and they can take the cylinder with them at home and cook uh, at home with um, their own hydrogen. I, I think this is, this is a perfect example, uh, Boreal Light, like a small company, a small startup using hydrogen to, for a completely different business case, which you have never thought about like a couple of years ago. And um, we already heard from uh, Sebastian Justus Schmidt in another episode 
about the business case uh, uh, of, of hydrogen. He's the founder of an Aptor, small, not even small, it's a bigger startup now. <laughs> Is it a startup still because it's it grown yeah, so they much? Have, they have a factory which has doubled in size. In yeah, <laughs> they, they have factories also in, in, in Italy yeah. and so on. So, um, but we also spoke to um, his co-founder, Vitea Cohn, and she's from a, not a small island. New Caledonia is not a small island, it's a huge island. It's, I think, located between Australia and uh, and New Zealand. It's a country or an island that you don't hear a lot of, but she is uh, very convinced that um, she also, so first of all, when she told us that she wanted to convince everybody on her island to switch to uh, hydrogen, to get rid of the diesel generators and, and diesel power generators, go to hydrogen. And she has also, I think, an exceptional idea uh, why hydrogen is so important uh, for the future, because it has to do something with awareness. So how might we make uh, green hydrogen more inclusive? Um, I think it is about um, raising awareness of how might life be if hydrogen is powering our future. And from a sensorial perspective, um, it's a lot more quiet. If cars are running on hydrogen or even electric, you don't hear them. And um, this, the air quality is much better. So this, the, the smells that would come from the exhaustion pipes are no longer there. So I think it's, it's really, making at an individual level um, uh, c customers or communities uh, understand that there is a uh, there is a potential future and encourage them to demand it actually to be like okay there are alternatives out there and we need them to be uh, integrated because then also creates this uh, job creation of system integrators of um, engineering procurement construction companies that understand that there is the demand uh, from individuals from neighborhoods that we want to shift away from fossil fuels and once this demand is also existing then people are more interested in in, in shifting their activities and, and and really diversifying their uh, services to include green hydrogen integration if we talk about how might we bridge this gap between an individual and green hydrogen. So I think that was quite impressive what she said um, about like the, the mindset that you need for like understanding how important hydrogen will be in the future. So you know it's all about the bigger picture and the whole picture. So it's people like Vitea who are actively working to bring a renewable energy to an island that currently imports everything, yeah. right? To companies like Hyundai, who are looking at the entire ecosystem of hydrogen from passenger car all the way to plane, right? Ships, trains, mm -hmm. trucks, everything in the middle, right? And how the mobility will be taken care of. And I think that it's important that we have all sides of the ecosystem approaching the problem because we need to transition to renewables and how society will do that also involves business. There's a shift in focus of the society, I think, um, that's switching towards a more more greener um, mindset. Um, there's a much higher awareness now of, of the um, ecological problems we have. So I think it's, it's just the right time now for a new um, emission-free technology. And then second of all, obviously, the technology itself gets better as well, right? So it's getting more, it's getting better, it's getting more, more, more efficient, it's getting cheaper by that. So we're getting out of this demo mode um, and we will see more sustainable, ecologically and economically sustainable, viable business cases. And that would obviously help um, to get this, um, this technology um, really into a, into a mainstream. Mark's completely right. Business cases need to be sustainable as well as economically viable. Of course, because I mean, there is still a thing looming around the corner called the climate change. And this hasn't changed. This is still there, even with Corona and everything we're talking about in a moment. It's still there and it's not getting smaller. So we, this problem is not getting smaller. So we have to do something. So, but why and how can hydrogen really help us in fighting the climate change? You will uh, find out more in our next episode. Mm -hmm.